Hi everyone, it's Brandy. Um, I'm sorry I'm a few minutes late tonight. Um, so I'm with Brushed by Brandy. I'm a furniture painter out of Sacramento, California. I'm also a Dixie Belle Paint brand ambassador. And um, you guys, tonight I'm gonna be talking a little bit about mixing paint for custom colors. And then I'm also gonna be talking about glazing. Um, so come on and let me know you're watching. Let me know where you're watching from. And then at the end of this broadcast, if you go like my page at Brushed by Brandy on Facebook or Instagram, and then if you share this post, we're gonna be giving away some paint at the end. You can win an eight ounce Dixie Belle paint in your choice of colors. So, um, you guys let me know if you can see me okay. We're having bad weather today. It's raining in California, so let me know if it's fuzzy or not, and if you're watching. Um, and my husband is here to answer questions if you guys have any tonight. Amy and Sheila, say hi. Hi, thanks guys. Working. Okay. So the piece I'm working on lately has been this, um, this is a table base. So imagine this with a glass tabletop on it, and this is just the base. So my customer has the glass tabletop and I'm just refinishing the base for her. Um, and in her house, she has some, she had some really specific color requests. Her upholsteries are um, warm grayages, which grayish can either lean gray or it can lean brown. Um, so I originally started off this piece with some gravel road on it and that was a little too gray. So I wanted to show you guys how I mix this warm kind of um, beigey gray tone here that's a little more brown than gravel road is. Um, I just have to send a shout out to Brenda. She said, hi, Sean. I gotta you know, Yay, say hi to my fan her. club. So she knows you're <laughs> <laughs> my God. I'm tired today, you guys. We've had company all weekend. My sister was here in town yesterday and then we had friends in town today. Can you open this? I cannot open that one. Um, so I'm tired. We've been visiting all day. Um, and the kids have been, you know, playing with friends. And um, yesterday we, we, so we're building a house and we got carpet on our stairs. And so we have this new bonus room that's accessible in our house. And like my kids are in love, in love with the bonus room. So anyway, back to this piece here. So my main putty color, the lighter color, is Dixie Belle Sandbar. Sandbar is a warm beige color. Um, this is a great one to have in your stockpile. If you win one of our giveaways, sandbar is a great tone. Um, so to mix this dark color, I started out with Dixie Belle Coffee Bean. And I think a lot of people are a little nervous to mix a color so you you know you feel like if it's not in the line you've got to go find it elsewhere and that's not that's just not true um you can take any of the 64 colors plus the metallics plus the glazes and they can all be mixed together to come up with custom finishes so for this one i started out with a little bit of um coffee bean and when i'm mixing colors i just use a little this is a baby spoon and I, I start out with a really small amount because I want to I am testing the mixture and I want to find out what gives me the color that I like before I mix it in large quantities. So I usually just start out with like a droplet on a paper plate and then I'll go to what I want to tint it to. So that was coffee bean and this is Dixie Belle putty. So really quick, I just also want to give a shout out to Gary and Sheila for saying hi. Okay. Gary wants to know where your shirt is, by the way. You know what, if you guys want to talk, why don't you take this offline, you guys. Little romance. Get, maybe you can schedule a coffee date or something. <laughs> right now, I need your attention here. I'm mixing paint, people. Where is your uh, shirt that you bought the other, or you got the other day? Your paint shirt. Um, so I'm gonna get this out later, you guys. I have a, uh, I have this paint rag out. <laughs> <laughs> and then Sheila wants to know if that is real wood. No, it is not. No, it's a resin. It's resin. So I actually started on this. I primed this with Dixie Belle Slick Stick before I added paint to it. Cause this is here listen if i knock on it can you hear it it's a resin table base so it it had a faux wood finish on it but it was it's really shiny it's yeah it's almost plastic you guys i'm not even joking i was wearing this the other night when i was painting this table base after i got off and i legit got paint on it that's you know, the best thing that ever happened that's dixie bell putty right there i have no clothes that don't have paint on it so i i mean it's just impossible i don't know so I think that's kind of like it's been initiated into my wardrobe if I have paint on it. Um, so now I'm gonna take some Dixie Belle putty. And then when I start out, so I'll start out with two colors on this one. And I just kind of mix them in a small in a small example. So I'll just take them. And I can see I'm kind of getting, um, I'm kind of getting to the tone that I wanted, but it's still a little dark. 
So then I would continue to add the putty. And then once I, once I kind of figure out what my mixture is, what the color combination is, I will mix this in a larger quantity. Okay, so that was um, putty and coffee bean. And I noticed it was staying really cool and I wanted to kind of warm it up a little bit. So then I added some mud puddle. These are all shades of brown, but they all have different undertones. Um, so I just take my spoon and I'm gonna add a little bit of mud puddle in. Oh, hey, Chris Donna chimed in. <laughs> How weird. <laughs> yeah, you can just disregard those comments. <laughs> so this is three colors now I've got on here. This is mud puddle, coffee bean, and putty. And they kind of get to this, you know, beigey tone and each one adds a little bit different tone to it. So I'm gonna go a little bit heavier on the putty. But as you keep adding colors, these are browns, which would probably be considered, you know, kind of boring neutrals, but I can make any tone of brown from this paint that I want. So that was kind of how I came up with this, um, the darker color that's on here, is those three colors mixed together and then blended into my coffee bean, or into my sandbar, I'm sorry. So this piece has so much detail on it that it's screaming for glaze. When I have pieces like this that have all this intricate carving, um, glaze really makes it pop. You remember when you were young and you used to color and you would highlight the edges of something? And like highlighting was like a fancy art technique. Well, this is, this is like using a highlighter on something. Oh, Christana said, asked if uh, you were talking crap. She was watching the kids. <laughs> carry on, Christana, carry on. It's called replay, girl. Hit the replay. Nothing here. Yep. Nothing here to see. Nothing to see here. <laughs> I'm not going to answer that. Um, so Dixieville has great glazes, and I have some of my glazes out here. Oh, it's a local celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> Someone just rolled in, literally rolled in, to be on camera. This is Logan, my four-year-old. Um, you going to do some painting? Yeah. You got your brush? Are you all ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. I have my brush. You know what that's called? Brush. Chip brush. But it can't move. Yeah, that's an old crusty one, huh? Can I use this one? You like that one better? Yeah. Yeah, that's a Dixie Bow brush. You want to show it to the camera? Look at that. Mom? Yeah. Can I put one in this and then gently do it? Um, gently? Well, I don't, need it. I don't need that on my piece. We're going to put some of this on my piece. So I have grunge gray out. That could work. This is Dixie Bow black glaze, but I'm actually going to start out with voodoo gel stain. Um, so whenever I want a tone of glaze that's not in the line, the Voodoo gel stains actually work great and they're a little more saturated in color, um, they, but they work great as a glaze. So glazing is essentially, I'm going to put this on and then I'm going to wipe it all back off and you'll see how it sticks in. It's going to find the low points and it's going to stick into those and really kind of um, emphasize my low points. I'm going to start out here. Can you guys see this okay on camera? I believe so. Do you, to, do you need to move in at all? I'm to paint with you. You want to paint with me? Mm -hmm. How about if you go find if you go find another brush because I need those brushes. Okay, I'll go find one. In here? Oh, here, what's this one? This one. And then you can use this paint here that I made on this paper plate. Okay. You? But you have to keep it there. Don't put it on my piece. This one's almost done. I don't need him painting on it. Mom, so, can I paint? On, on the plate. Okay. Can you paint on the plate? You can, yeah. So I'm going to shake this up. This is a new bottle. So I have Tobacco Road here. Tobacco Road's like a dark brown color. I also got out Up in Smoke. Might be a good option. I'm going to test out a couple of these and just see which one I like better in those crevices. You gave up on your painting? No, I'm going to go away with this seat. Oh, you need your seat. Got it. Okay. So when I um, glaze with the Voodoo Gel Stain, I just put a little bit onto a paper plate. I like that color. I think that's going to really complement my piece. So that's Voodoo Gel Stain in Tobacco Road. So just a quick question. As far, uh, Jennifer wants to know, as far as uh, refinishing her oak stairs, do you have any recommendations and would Voodoo work? Um, um, gel Stain. I, if, you're, if it's going on top of an uh, existing finish, um, I really like Gel Stain. So um, I would actually recommend the oil-based Gel Stain, which is um, um, the No Pain Gel Stain. And gel stains can go over the top of an existing finish. So I just put the tobacco road in there. It's a little light. I can't see it up against my um, dark color on here. So that's not going to be dark enough. 
So I'm going to come back with some black magic. Also voodoo gel stain, just a darker color. Mom, I don't want this paintbrush. I want to get a tiny one. No, no more, sweetie. You... I, I just want a tiny one. Okay, so let's try this. So Laura wants to know, when would you use a gel stain otherwise? Um, so gel stains are a little bit different in that um, a gel stain doesn't penetrate into a wood. It will sit on top of a wood um, versus a, a penetrating stain, which will soak into the wood. So they have minimal penetration into the wood grain. On my pinky with the tiny. Mm -hmm. um, so over the top of an existing finish, if you, um, you can use wood, you can use a, a gel stain just like you would any other wood stain as well. It will penetrate into a wood just minimally. So you can get the same look um, if you're going over raw wood. Here, I'm gonna scoot a little closer to see if we can get a better, sorry, I got cords to. So I have my Dixie Belle um, oval small brush out and I'm dipping it into my, um, I like the Black Magic gel stain better than the Tobacco Road, just the colors better. And then I'm just dipping it in onto a paper plate and I'm using this like a glaze. So I like gel stains over um, um, an existing wood finish. I also use gel stain if I need something that's a, a little um, less opaque than a um, traditional oil-based stain. Like if I needed to camouflage that I went through the veneer, I would use a gel stain because you can kind of faux paint with them and it's a little bit translucent. Um, but it still is opaque and you can get a wood look out of it. So I faux paint sometimes damaged wood with um, gel stain. Um, if it's a color I need, I will use it on a on raw wood, just like a regular stain. Um, Mom, I'm moving the paint over here for you. So now I'm going to take out my paint rag. Ha ha. <laughs> Wait for it. I'm kidding. I brought it out to use as a paint rack, but I won't. Although I already got paint on it, blaring it the other night. I changed now, the oil with this it. This is legit a, a regular rag. And I like to, when I'm glazing, I wipe off with a, with a dry rag first. So this is the best part of glazing. I don't like glazing, but when you come back and wipe this off and watch how it's just sitting into the crevices and it just, this is emphasizing those. So it's a, you know, it's a small thing to do, but the overall impact of glaze, when you've got so much fine detail like this, I mean, you have to put glaze on a piece like this. So I will take and I will wipe it back with a dry rag first. I'm sorry, you know what, let me go back. This has clear coat on it. I have already clear coated this. So before I glaze, I do add a clear coat. And then I will take a wet rag. So this is, um, I like these, people use baby wipes I find that whatever is in these wipes back the paint really, really well. These are Costco cleaning wipes. Um, I prefer them over baby wipes any day of the week. I've used baby wipes and they just don't get as clean of a glaze. Yeah, so, that's what I'm doing today. So then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna wipe off with the wet rag where I just wiped with my dry rag. Yes, this is tiny. So then if you kind of move in here, even this line out a little bit but if you move in here you can see how it just sat in between these little beads here it just darkened those crevices it darkened my um, edge right along here I'm also going to come up here and I'm going to glaze this rope detail that's at the top so Gina wants to know couldn't you use black wax yeah you could do this with a wax <clears throat> um, it would be a lot of work to do with a wax wax doesn't wipe back as easily as glaze does so, you know, I think when it's, when it's a lot of fine details, that's when I get the glaze out. And this is all, I mean, this is a lot. Like it has carvings everywhere. This is where I would use glaze just for, for quickness of application. I mean, I would have to dig a wax into all these little crevices that I'm trying to get this glaze into. Um, so even though the Dixie Bell waxes are really nice and soft, I just think this is a job for glaze. So again, I just painted it all over and I'm gonna get out my dry rag. <laughs> Kidding, but I almost do use that. Let me get out, Christana, have you gotten your packages yet? You guys, I sent Christana presents too. Mine are just taking longer to get to her. And she needs to open them on camera. Don't let her forget and try to open it behind the scenes because I wanna see. 
Yes, Leanne, there was clear coat on here first. Yes, there is clear coat on here first. Thank you. So then I just come back with my wipey. And now you can compare this to a spot that I haven't done. So say here. Where's the camera? So say here where I haven't done anything versus this over here that has now has the dark in between the ridges. And it just defines those little ridges ever so slightly. You know, same thing with here where I've got it on these beads versus it's just very slight. I'll come down here and do this fluted portion. So does the glaze just go on much easier than the wax? Or does it wipe off easier than the wax? Yeah, it wipes off much easier than the wax. Yeah, the wax is meant to set up and harden and you know form a protective barrier versus glaze, which is just a decorative finish. So, um, you know, this is a liquid that I'm putting on. Even though I, I'm actually using the Voodoo Gel Stain and Black Magic as my glaze. But the um, Voodoo Gel Stain performs a lot like a glaze when you want to use it for this portion. And I like because it gives you a few different colors and it's also a little more saturated than some of the glazes are. So the, um, the Dixie Belle Black Glaze go, goes on a little bit lighter than this and I really want these to be dark because I have dark on my piece. So I, I just worry that if it was too light you wouldn't see you know, the contrast I'm trying to add. Teresa, this is a resin, it's a yeah, base, resin. it's not wood. But it all paints the same. I um, prepped this with some slick stick because it is a resin table base. So I'm doing this little acanthus leaf detail here. I'm just digging it and I'm, I'm putting it all over this whole detail, getting it into all the crevices. Okay, and once it's all on and it looks super messed up, I'm gonna come back and wipe it all back off again. So this is a whole lot of like, put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off. Um, I don't enjoy glazing. I much prefer working with paint, but sometimes there's just pieces that like only glaze will do, and this is one of them. I used glaze when I got fine details like this. Um, you guys, I'm so close on my page. It's killing me right now. If you saw my post today, I'm so close on my page to hitting 20,000 likes. Chris Donna just made that comment, yes, by the way. did you? You guys, that, that's, a, that's a huge number to me. When, when I got, um, when I started with Dixie Belle a year ago, I had about 5,000 likes on my page. And that was just grown very organically by sharing and groups and things like that. And since I've been working with them, my page has, you know, quadrupled. And I'm so excited because it's, it, that's a reflection. Like, that's the support that you guys give me. Um, and I'm so excited. So I'm so close to 20,000. Like, I'm so close. It's killing me. On Facebook and then to 10,000 on Instagram. And those are big. Those are big numbers, you guys. Um, they're big for me. Huge. So please go share this post and go like my page and I'm going to give you, I'm going to give away paint Mom, for doing it too. I made him for you so you can't, if you get out, you get more. Okay, so this is, this is my mixed <laughs> paint. At the beginning of this, I mixed a paint color, the paint color I used on Mom, here. I need that. I need I mixed that. onto a paper plate and my son is making art with it. Mom, I need Beautiful. that. Beautiful. I need that. So he's over here painting the paper plate for me. I'm trying to actually uh, get a picture of the top as well because the sides oh, are really yeah, cool, but the top is oh, intricate as well. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, so I blended this. This is the lighter color is Dixie Belle Sandbar, and then the darker is the color I mixed at the beginning, which has coffee bean, putty, and um, mud puddle in it. So it made this kind of grayish color in here. And then I'm going to highlight all this with some... Um, glaze and then I'm going to come back and put some bronze gilding waxes on it too. So just um, that's really the layering of the products that um, I don't know that all come together into that final look. Every step adds a little bit of detail. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do this fluting. Done. It looks beautiful baby. So, you get out, so for you this out, I don't you get I don't want glaze out onto the high points. I really only want it in these low points right here. So I'm going to put it right into that crevice where I want it. I don't need to paint paint it all over if I'm just going to take it back off of those parts. So see like that? Mom, I mean it just, I'm all done. you might not have noticed these before. I think it looks like, you know, like a waistline. 
how it kind of curves in right here. And, um. Oh, Mom, look what I made for you. Oh, it looks so beautiful, baby. And that's it. And then I'll come back with my, um, okay. these are just Costco cleaning wipes that I like to use, and I'll wipe it off. You know, and I can clean up any portion. Because I put that clear coat on after my paint, it's made it so much easier to wipe back any parts that I don't want. I just want it to be in those crevices and look a little bit old and worn. And um, so I'll keep coming back here and adding it into these, um, this fluting. And then I wipe it back with my... Kind of touched a nerve on the waistline. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't say anything. You guys get me out No, no, that everybody's wishing their waistline was like this. <laughs> yeah, so true. No joke. I'm right there with you guys right there with you um the friends we had over today one of them is a friend i've had since high school and we were joking about how like you know young and fresh we were and then kids age you like 10 years a kid i swear i i see pictures when we had our first son i'm like wow you know we were so happy and fresh faced and now we're like haggard and tired haggard well not my husband of course he still looks you know, like the day I met him. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. So I think it looks kind of like a waistline. You guys see my Christmas tree I put up? I got one of those dress form Christmas trees. Um, I put it on my story the other day. I love it. It's like dressing a Barbie doll with my Christmas decorations. I need to post a better picture of it on my timeline, but go follow my page if you want to see that, you guys. Um, and if you want to be entered to win some paint at the end of this. Um, so the dress, dress form Christmas trees, you guys know what those are, where it's like a dress form on the top, like a lady's figure. And then the bottom, the tree branches are her skirt. So cute. I put like a buffalo check flannel on her and all red ornaments down her skirt. So cute. I'm obsessed with this tree. And I get to dress it differently every year. I finally have something girly in my house. So cute. I got it last year on Christmas clearance. All about that. Um, even though christana has been shopping the Christmas clearance a little early, if you've been watching her outfit choices, she's hitting up all the Christmas stuff at Walmart. Because they have all the good Christmas stuff. So let's see, I've done this leaf over here. I guess I need to go around and keep doing this rope detail around the top. So between the paint and then um, the clear coat, the glaze, and then once I put some metallic, like a like the warm bronze, um, you know what? Let me let me grab it. No, you can't that. I'll be in another minute. Sorry, my. Christana, really quick, wants to know if this is the last one before you go live together. Is this your last live before then? I don't know. Have you gotten your package yet? They're commenting on the uh, the first child issue. And Christina oh. said how she looks so good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Apparently, I'm the only one that happened to. Sorry. So this is kind of what I was thinking. This is um, which I think you're a bunch of liars if you told me that's not the case. I want to see pictures. Um, this is gil uh, Dixie Belle hammered copper, hammered copper gilding wax. Can you see that? Uh, let me cut down the sheen a little bit. It's sparkly. There you go, turn it. There you go. You see the color of that? So pretty. Christana so, says she has not got any packages yet. What? I know. It's literally on the slow boat from China. Literally. So I will take this and I just use my finger when I'm applying gilding wax. And I'm gonna highlight the tops of these. So this leaf detail right here was especially the part that I wanted to get with that. I'm telling you, I swear I sent you something. Natalia knows what it is. I sent her a picture. Oh, great. Throw other people down. Yeah. yeah. But she's sworn to secrecy, so don't even bother asking. She's not going to tell you. you guys are Chris Donna says you keep trying to pawn your beautiful shirt on to people. <laughs> a no takers yet, have you noticed? <laughs> So I'm still stuck still with it. has the shirt. Yeah. Yes. Everybody's just being nice. It's like those friends on Facebook, like when you post a selfie and they're like, "Oh, it's beautiful," and really behind the scenes they're like, "Why? <laughs> Why?" I don't get those. 
<laughs> yeah, of course not. Uh, that's how you tell who your real friends are. But do you see what that lighter on the top and then the dark in the crevices? Oh my gosh. It's those crusty layers that make it look old. Like this was gilded a thousand years ago and it's worn off since then. I never got this part up here with my wet wipe. Let me come back and get that. Christon is crying. <laughs> Shut up. You are not. <laughs> on the inside? <laughs> We're all crying on the inside, girl. <sighs> Here, hold on. I'm going to put my hand in front. What, people want to see your hand? Yes, they totally want to see my hand. I know, everyone keeps asking me. My I've been told I have a voice for radio. Yeah. Apparently I have the face to he accommodate that. He literally them. did a radio show. Like, there's this radio show locally that you can um, go on and host the show. Like, pick the songs and host the show. You know what else I'll show you? I'm going to show you paint. If I use... So I have coffee bean out. And I'm just going to show you this just for kicks. If I use coffee bean in the same way, you can use paint as a glaze, too. So this is coffee bean paint. And I'm going to put it over here. So you have so many options. I was using a Voodoo gel stain. You can use paint. You can use the glazes. You could do this in wax. Um, and any of them would give you essentially the same look. So anyway, so my husband went on the radio. Yeah, okay. What was this, like a year ago? Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. He came home one day and was like, oh, I'm going to do a radio show for him. I was like, okay, <laughs> go for it. But it was kind of cool because we all sat around and listened and our friends listened. And, um, but it was... Uh, you know, an old rock station and you get to go on and tell stories and pick your songs. And he totally, I don't know. He works for a bank, you guys. My husband works for a bank. He's totally, you know, white collar 90% of the time. I don't know. I actually think I like the paint better on this piece. I really like that. It's just the right color. It really got in there nice. I might come back and do what I've done in the, back up. in the paint. You, I don't know if you can tell the difference, but it's just a little, um, I don't know. More so by color. It's hard to get in there to see the crevices. Yeah, I mean, this is hard because this is fine detail work, which is hard to get onto camera. But I really like it with the paint. Um, if you come back and wipe the paint right after, It'll come off easier. If I let this set up for a few minutes, it'll stay a little bit better. Um, so I try to work in small areas. So then once this is dry, do you coat it with anything? Yeah, I will coat. So I like to sandwich glaze in between. I clear coat um, glaze, no matter what I'm using for glaze, whether it's the Dixie Belle waxes, the Voodoo gel stain or paint um, or glaze, I would put those over a clear coat and then I sandwich it again with another coat of clear coat in it. So you've got, you know, two coats of clear coat and your glaze is in between and it's nice and protected. So these details are not going to wear off. So I, yes, I will come back and put another clear coat on this when I'm done. Now to somewhat recap, what colors are you using? Okay, so I mixed, my, my son's been over here playing in my mix plate, but I mixed this color in the beginning of this and I mixed it using Dixie Doll Coffee Bean, um, Mud Puddle, and Putty. And it just turned into this kind of warm shade of beigey brown. And then I blended it into Dixie Belle Sandbar. So it's coffee bean, mud puddle, putty, and then sandbar is my light color. But I like how they all came together. So that's my son's artwork. Love them to tears. Love them. Um, so let's see, you guys, this is my last live for the month of December um, on the Dixie Bell page. I might put, go on my page a few times. Um, and, um, but in January, I'm going to be live on the Dixie Bell page every Thursday evening, Thursday evening at 9 Eastern. So 9 p.m. Eastern. The reason I go later is because I'm in California. So for me, my time is, you know, it's earlier, like. I came on at eight o'clock Eastern tonight, but it's only five o'clock here in California. So, um, you know, mark that on your calendar, you guys, on the Dixie Bell page every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, I'm gonna go live. 
And I don't know, I have a couple ideas. I thought about either taking a piece in the beginning and starting it from scratch with you guys and we just work the same piece or um, do you guys prefer getting different techniques every time? I like the paint. I really like the paint for this. Because I want it to be really noticeable. Um, and the Voodoo gel stain and the glazes were just a little more subtle. This is, you know, I don't know, more opulent, these pieces. The paint sets up a little faster when you're using it as a glaze compared to the glazes. It sets up faster. Now, is this all water-based? Yep. Um, everything in the Dixie Bell line is water-based with the exception of the no paint gel stain. So that's why the products all work so good together. That's why you can take and put a clear coat over the top of your waxes. That doesn't work in a lot of lines. So when you use waxes as an accent with Dixie Bell, you can protect that under a clear coat. And that doesn't work in a lot of lines. Um, but all these products work really well together so you can layer them. They're all friendly with each other. Um, and that's how they design the line. So you can use everything in conjunction with each other and layer the products on top of each other to get these really um, in-depth looks. Each step is simple in itself. It's just that layering that gives you the, um, I don't know, that more opulent look. Is that the right word? So I'm going back. I just, I have already done this leaf, but I really like how the paint is looking in here. So I'm actually probably doing more of a paint wash using my paint as a glaze. Um, it's not as translucent. Glazes are a little bit translucent as are the no paint gel stain or the voodoo gel stains. Well, doing a piece from start to finish uh, is apparently a hit. Yeah, you guys like that idea? Yeah. So starting out like, you know, first week of the month, we do our cleaning and our prep work. And second week we lay on a base coat and third week we do a second coat. And then at the end we do our finishing touches. And that way, by the end of the month, you guys have a full tutorial from start to finish. That was kind of what I was thinking. I thought that would be kind of fun. And then it's the same piece I'm working on every week with you guys. So I don't know. All right, maybe we'll try that in January and see, see how it works and um, what the response is. So every Thursday in January, we'll be, I'll be live on the Dixie Bell page. Oh my gosh, I love this. So let me clean this up and then I'm going to come on and um, give away some paint, you guys. So please go like my page at Brushed by Brandy because I'm really close to hitting a goal on there, you guys. A huge milestone. When I hit that milestone, I have a full tutorial, a full start to finish tutorial that I'm going to post. So if you guys want to see that, please share this post because I have only a few more likes and then I'm going to give away um, that full tutorial. And I like to give away the tutorials versus doing paint giveaways because I feel like that's a way that everybody wins. So there are so many people that support me that I have a hard time just picking one. And so when I get to give away a tutorial, it's something that everybody can enjoy and I just really like that. So that's usually why I choose to do that. So I have a full tutorial stashed. So Beth is asking for a, an in-depth on basically preparing a piece for paint because oh, she feels man. like she's not cleaning it well enough. Um, so I always, you know, there is no one answer I think for prep because prep really depends on your specific piece. You know, my prep for this piece, it's resin. This is a resin table base involved, um, cleaning well with Dixie Bell white lightning and then applying, um, um, slick stick because it was a resin surface. Now, if you're painting onto a wood dresser, you may not need that slick stick step. So that's what I mean when I, when there, there's no one answer, except cleaning is always needed. No matter what your piece is, cleaning is always needed. But you know, whether you need a primer is not always needed. You don't have to sand for your paint, but you may need to sand to get a smooth finish. So Dixie Bell paint doesn't require it, but if you've got damage on your piece or um, a repair you need to do with wood filler or anything like that, then yeah, you would need to sand that. So there's not a blanket one size fits all answer, you know, probably except for, yes, you need to always clean with Dixie Bell white lightning. Um, white lightning is, it's a granulated product. I dissolve it into water in a spray bottle. Um, it's like the consistency of a, like a, table salt almost 
maybe not as fine as that, maybe like a rock salt. Um, and you dissolve it into water and then you just spray it on like a, like a cleaning product and wipe it back off. What color are you using right now? So I'm, I'm doing this with um, coffee bean. This is coffee bean, but I love how it looks in those crevices. It's working for me. So um, I'm just keep, I'm still going on this one, talking to you guys about prep. So, you know, the one size fits all answer for prep would be really nice, but it really depends on your piece. You need to make judgment calls based on what your, what the condition of your piece, what is your piece made of, what are the existing finishes on it. Um, but always clean with white lightning. White lightning is formulated with TSP. Um, TSP is trisodium phosphate, um, which you can buy at the hardware store, but it's nasty stuff, you guys. It's a chemical. Um, so I like that the white lightning cleaner is a little gentler than, you know, a straight TSP. You still want to wear gloves when you're using it like any cleaner. Um, but it doesn't have, a, you know, it has a very faint odor. It's not super strong. It's not... Um, it's just a really nice way to know you're getting the effectiveness of the TSP. So once you're done with the white lightning, do you rinse it? Do you yes. wipe it? Okay. Um, so I will wipe it back and then I will come back with a water, with a soap and water solution. And just, cause I want to wipe away any residue from the cleaner as well. I mean, cleaning your piece is not something you want to scrimp on cause that is going to affect how every layer after that adheres. And I'm telling you, there is nothing more devastating than going through the time it takes to do a whole piece only to find out that you skipped a step on prep and now your paint doesn't stick. You know, you can scrape it off with your fingernail. It's devastating, you guys. You put so much time into this to spend an extra half an hour to clean a piece well. Um, you'll never regret it. <laughs> you know, kind of going back to your baby wipes, Costco wipes. Yes. My experience obviously is not you know wiping paint however baby wipes tend to leave um pieces behind yeah, lint, whatever the case may be whereas these don't and these actually have two different sides they have a soft side and a little bit of a scrubbing side depending um, on what you one, use i'm using these that don't have the scrubby side these okay ones do they come with a scrubby one and this one um they have whatever cleaners in them but you know what? i've never looked does it tell you what's in these Maybe on the main box they come in. Anyway, whatever's in these. Um, oh, here. The ammonium chloride. I don't know what, what's ammonium chloride. Well, anyway, whatever they put in these, it really wipes everything away really easily, whether it's glaze or paint or whatever. Um, I just really like them. I don't like wipe baby wipes. Some are thin and flimsy and you're right about the lint thing if your piece has any you know little uneven spots or anything they it, it'll get caught up in there and leave little fuzzes all over um you know all baby wipes aren't created equal i just don't care for baby wipes for this i'm just rubbing this is um dixie bell coffee bean paint I told you guys i was going to give away some paint did you guys share this post it's coming i promise now I'm in the zone. You know when you get painting and it's really hard to stop? That's the problem I have. I end up binge painting because I come in here and I can't stop until it's done. And I'll just paint for hours on end until my whole piece is done. Some people paint in like small chunks. I don't, I'm a binge painter. I like that. So that's it, guys. I mean, I've painted two coats on this table. It's I, This table's been a tedious one for me. And, um, and I'm not anywhere near done because after this, I got a clear coat and then I'll come back and put that um, gilding wax on all my high points, but it's going to be beautiful. I think it's done. Like this is the side that's dry and this acanthus leaf here. And it's so pretty compared over here to the one I haven't done, which looks, it just looks more basic. You know? So Jill is asking, we got a couple people asking again about the wipes. They're not Clorox. It's Costco's no. brand. It's a Kirkland, but they're similar to a Clorox. It's just yeah. their version of. These would be a Clor the Clorox wipes. I just get these at Costco. They're cheaper than the Clorox ones. I don't know. I really like them. 
if you, you know, um, Clorox wipes might work, but I just, I get these at Costco, so. All right, I'm gonna come give away some paint. Ugh. Let me scoot over here. I don't have my spool tonight, and I have to watch out for all the paint brushes that my son was using on the floor. Who wants to win some paint? What colors would you guys choose? Okay, you guys, I have a winner. Tonight's winner, Latasha Woolams. Latasha, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. I'm really close to a big goal on my page, and so I'm really excited to get there and share a full tutorial on my page with you at Brush by Brandy. Uh, but Latasha Woolams, congratulations. You're a winner tonight of an 8 ounce of Dixieville paint. So um, I hope I answered some questions about your options for applying a glaze, what you would use a glaze for, um, and then some different products that actually could serve that same purpose. So, but there's a lot of variety in the line. Um, just everything works really nice together. So I'm gonna finish up this piece. I also need a photograph. Can you guys see this? This is the table that we did. I haven't photographed it yet, but it's done and it's gorgeous. I love it. So this is the table we did. I need to get this photograph and that photograph and then I'll share these with you guys. Um, Latasha messaged me on my page at Brushed by Brandy so I can get your information and um, get that paint out to you guys. Thursday evenings in January, guys. I'll see you there. Bye.